we've already learned that a moving magnetic field close to a copper coil will generate a flow of electrons. We call this electric current. By adding three powerful magnets to a fidget spinner, we found that we can easily generate enough electricity to light an LED light. In other words, we're converting the mechanical energy of the spinning motion into the electrical energy that lights up the light bulb. According to the great scientist Michael Faraday, this process can also work backwards. We should be able to convert electrical energy into the mechanical energy of movement. Copper wire is not magnetic, and it will not stick to a magnet. Here's a neodymium magnet, and you see it does not stick to the copper coil. But what happens if we run electricity through the coil? As I connect the battery to the copper coil, it now has electrons running through the coil and it has now become magnetic. It can attract or repel the neodymium magnet. This is what we call an electromagnet. But can we use the strength of this electromagnet to cause something to move in a useful way? Here you see a fidget spinner and it's being repelled by the magnet, but not quite enough to make it spin. Let's try that again with a fidget spinner that has two magnets. Can we use the electromagnet to make the spinner spin? And what about a spinner that has five magnets? When we combine magnetism and electricity in this way to cause controlled movement, this is called an electric motor. This fidget spinner is an electric motor. But can we build a better electric motor? Here's how you can build one of the simplest electric motors ever. Take a D battery and tape it to the bottom of the plastic cup. You'll need a round disc magnet, like this ceramic magnet. Neodymium magnets are fine too, but this is plenty strong enough. And you see it sticks to the battery because the battery is made of steel. You don't need to tape the magnet on. I'm putting a broccoli rubber band or any kind of rubber band around the battery from end to end. It should be good and tight. You'll need two paper clips. And you're going to bend the paper clip as you see here. We're trying to make a little hook at one end. You might want to use a pair of pliers for this part careful not to poke yourself. We're going to tuck that paper clip underneath the rubber band so it's right against the end of the battery. And then put another paper clip at the other end exactly the same way. The two hooks should be straight across from each other, lined up with the magnet in the center. Now you're going to need about one meter of wire. This is 24 gauge magnet wire. It's called that because it's often used for making electromagnets. And we need a coil that's about one inch in diameter. I'm wrapping it around a film canister. You can use any round object. About one inch, a little bit more, a little bit less is fine. We want to leave about three inches of wire at both ends. Make a nice tight coil and slide it off. And now we're going to wrap the loose ends around the two opposite sides so we can leave a strand sticking straight out to the side. And this needs to be as symmetrical as possible. So the two straight wires are straight across from each other. Nice and straight.
you can cut off the longer piece to make them even, and it should look like that. Now we need to sand off the red paint that's on the wire. That red paint is called enamel, and it's used as insulation. We need to get that insulation off both ends. So a piece of sandpaper, just keep turning it and rubbing it. Make sure you get really close to the coil. Run all the paint off of both long pieces. Now we're ready to try our motor. Place it on the two hooks, give it a little flip, and with luck the motor will start to spin all by itself. Can you figure out how the coil is getting electricity? Can you figure out why we had to sand off that red paint? Let's try changing the magnet to a strong neodymium magnet. This time I'll have to raise up the hooks a little bit because this magnet is so powerful. Once we get it adjusted correctly, it should spin quite rapidly. How long will this motor work? What would make it stop? Do you think you could explain what's making that coil spin so fast? I hope you'll give this a try yourself. The materials are not hard to find, it's easy to make, and it's a lot of fun. Good luck!